Welcome to the basic obstetric ultrasound training course for healthcare providers. Ultrasound plays an important role in identifying pregnancy-related conditions that put the mother or fetus at risk during delivery. In most low-income countries, there is a shortage of people experienced in performing pregnancy ultrasound. This course was created to train healthcare workers to perform basic pregnancy ultrasound in parts of the world where formal training is not available. The videos, as well as other educational materials available at tinyurl.com backslash uwultrasound are designed to be used in a two-week ultrasound course. The hands-on sessions in the trainer's guide are an essential component of this course and must be supervised by an experienced ultrasound practitioner. This is not a comprehensive pregnancy ultrasound course and does not result in an official certification or diploma. After you finish the course and pass the written and practical tests, we strongly recommend you have at least 40 hours of scanning experience with clinical mentoring before you undertake unsupervised scanning. My name is Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf and I will be narrating this 12th video in our pregnancy ultrasound series. This video will focus on identifying the fetal lie and presentation. Please visit our website for access to all of our video and training materials. In this lesson you will learn three main skills why it is important to identify the fetal lie and presentation, how to know when it is abnormal, and when to perform a follow-up ultrasound. There are a few terms that we should introduce now to describe the orientation of the fetus in the uterus. The first term is lie, which refers to the orientation of the fetal spine in relation to the mother's spine. The lie can either be longitudinal or transverse. The next term is fetal presentation, which refers to the leading fetal part that is closest to the pelvic inlet. The fetal presentation can either be cephalic, head down, or breech, head up. A longitudinal lie, meaning that the fetal spine is aligned with the maternal spine, can mean that the baby is in either the cephalic or breech presentation. Another possibility is that the fetal lie is transverse, which means that the baby is in sideways position with its head towards one of the maternal sides. Any presentation or lie other than cephalic is abnormal. A transverse fetal lie or a breech presentation can complicate delivery. About 1 in 300 term pregnancies has a transverse fetal lie. Only about 3% to 4% of term pregnancies are breech. Please have your trainer demonstrate a cephalic and breech presentation and a transverse fetal lie using a doll. Any fetal presentation other than cephalic is abnormal, which can lead to complications during delivery. For example, a breech baby can become stuck, which leads to obstructed labor. Another complication of transverse fetal lie or breech presentation is that the umbilical cord can slip down into the vagina after the fetal membranes break and become compressed. Obstructed labor is a condition where the fetus does not move into the birth canal even with strong contractions. It is the fifth most frequent cause of maternal death. The most common cause of obstructed labor is a fetal head that is too large for the mother's pelvis. An abnormal fetal lie and benign tumors like fibroids in the birth canal are also causes. The risk of complications during birth is many times higher with a transverse lie or a breech presentation than with a cephalic presentation. Obstructed labor can result in fetal or maternal death or maternal complications. During a prolonged and obstructed labor, oxygen flow to the baby's brain can decrease, resulting in death or disability. 
Another possibility is that the long labor results in a hole or tear between the mother's vagina and rectum, or vagina and bladder, which is called a fistula. With a fistula, the woman is unable to control her feces or urine. A mother can also die from a ruptured uterus or infection. Always refer mothers with an abnormal fetal lie or presentation at 36 weeks or later to deliver at a hospital. Mothers need to be at a facility that can safely attempt to turn the baby, called aversion, or perform a cesarean section in case of obstructed labor. Many cases of an abnormal fetal lie or presentation are not found before delivery because it can be difficult to diagnose during a regular clinical exam. As a result, many mothers with an abnormal fetal lie or presentation deliver at a facility that cannot perform a cesarean section if needed. Using ultrasound, we can determine the fetal lie easily using the robust technique. We described the robust scan in an earlier lesson. Who can describe how to do a complete robust scan? Please pause the video now to ask a participant to describe the robust scan. To start a robust scan, take three sagittal scans from the symphysis pubis, which is low on the abdomen, to the upper abdomen. The first scan is in the midline, the second to the mother's right of midline, the third to the mother's left of midline. Next, take three transverse scans, scanning from the maternal right to the left. The first is just above the symphysis in the lower abdomen. The second in the mid-abdomen or mid-uterus, and the third across the upper portion of the uterus. This will be in the upper abdomen in the third trimester of pregnancy. This is a sagittal view of the uterus. What is the fetal lie and presentation and why? Please pause the video now to encourage responses. This is a cephalic presentation and longitudinal lie because the mother's feet are to the right of the image and her head is to the left, so the fetal head is closest to the cervix. What is the fetal lie and presentation in this image and why? Please pause the video now to encourage responses. The answer is that the fetus is in the breech presentation and has a longitudinal lie. The fetal buttocks are closest to the cervix, which is to the right of the image, and the fetal head is toward the mother's head, which is to the left of the image. This slide emphasizes the orientation of the fetus in relation to the mother during the scan. A breech fetus has its head toward the mother's head and buttocks toward the cervix on a sagittal scan. There are three types of breech presentation. The frank breech is the most common type. A frank breech has the hips flexed and knees extended, sometimes called the pike position. Notice that in a frank breech, the fetal buttocks are closest to the cervix. The next most common type of breech is the incomplete or footling breech, which has one or both hips extended and a foot closest to the cervix. The complete breech is the least common. In the complete breech, the hips and knees are flexed, sometimes called the cannonball position. The incomplete breech imparts the highest risk during labor, followed by complete breech, then frank breech. In addition to obstructed labor, there is also a risk of cord prolapse with a breech presentation. This occurs after the membranes rupture 
and the umbilical cord falls down into the vagina and becomes compressed or squeezed between the walls of the vagina. It is more important to identify a breech presentation than the specific type of breech. Sometimes a type of breech can be seen, but it is often difficult. These images show an incomplete and frank breech. Please notice the foot nearest the cervix in the left image, which is characteristic of an incomplete or footling breech. In the right image, the buttocks are nearest the cervix, and you can see one leg extended up in the anterior part of the image. This is a frank breech. This is a sagittal view of the uterus. What is the fetal lie? In this image, we see a transverse or cross-section of the fetal abdomen. We can identify the stomach and umbilical vein. Since this is a sagittal view of the uterus, the fetus must have a transverse lie. This illustration shows how a sagittal slice through the fetal chest and abdomen looks when the fetus has a transverse lie. What is the fetal lie in presentation in this case? Note that this image is in the transverse plane. Please pause the video now to encourage responses from the group. Here we can see the fetal stomach and fetal spine. This illustration shows that the fetus has a longitudinal lie and cephalic presentation with the fetal spine on the maternal right. Please ask your trainer to demonstrate this fetal lie with a doll prop. Then compare the structures in the drawings with the structures on ultrasound. It is not uncommon for the fetus to change its lie and presentation up to four to five weeks before delivery. After 36 weeks, the fetal lie and presentation rarely changes. This is one of the many reasons why accurate fetal dating is so important in order to mark these weeks correctly. If you identified an abnormal fetal lie or presentation earlier in the pregnancy, repeat the ultrasound at 32 to 36 weeks. If an abnormal lie or presentation persists, refer to the hospital for delivery or an attempt to turn the baby. If the fetal presentation is cephalic, and the pregnancy is normal, deliver at your health center. Let's review these concepts. A patient comes to your health center before 32 weeks. Whether you identify a normal or abnormal fetal lie or presentation, ask her to return for another ultrasound at 36 weeks to check the lie and presentation again because it is likely to change. If a patient comes to your health center at 36 weeks or later, and the fetal presentation is cephalic and the pregnancy is normal, encourage delivery at your health center. If you identify an abnormal fetal lie or presentation, send her to the referral hospital. The obstetrician will decide if the baby can be turned and how to best deliver the baby. Here are the key points. An abnormal fetal lie or presentation is anything other than cephalic and is associated with increased risk for the mother and fetus. If an abnormal fetal lie or presentation is identified before 36 weeks, repeat the ultrasound at 36 weeks at your health center. If the fetal lie or presentation is abnormal at 36 weeks or later, encourage delivery at the referral hospital. Here are questions for review. Which fetal lie or presentation is considered abnormal? The answer is anything other than cephalic. What can cause obstructed labor? The answer is an abnormal fetal lie or presentation, a fetal head that is too large, or a fibroid in the birth canal. Which problems can result from obstructed labor? The answer is fetal death, maternal death, and other maternal complications like fistula, which is an abnormal connection between the vagina and bladder or rectum. 
which ultrasound technique is useful in determining fetal lie or presentation? The answer is the robust scan. What are the different types of breach presentation? The answer is complete, incomplete or footling, and frank breach. At what gestational age will the fetus no longer change lie? The answer is that the fetus can change lie or presentation at any time, but it is unusual after 36 weeks. Thank you for your attention and interest in learning pregnancy ultrasound. Please pause this video now to ask your instructor any questions about this course. We thank the following individuals who played a major role in course development. Dr. Robert Nathan, Dr. William Marks, and Nicole Goldsmith, registered sonographer. Many other individuals contributed valuable time and expertise in the instructional design and materials development, including Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf, Dr. Scott Barnhart, Dr. Michael Kawuya, Susan Kingston, and Stacy Lissett. Finally, we wish to thank Dr. William Marks for the use of images from his book, Ultrasound, A Practical Approach, and Jennifer Summers and Jan Hamanishi for graphic design and illustrations. The University of Washington Department of Radiology has trained healthcare workers in pregnancy ultrasound in many parts of the world. If you have questions about this video or course, please contact Dr. Robert Nathan, Dr. William Marks, or Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf. This course was collaboratively developed by the University of Washington Department of Radiology, Obstetrics and Gynecology, and the International Training and Education Center for Health, ITEC. It was made possible through a grant from the GE Foundation. Consano also contributed funding. We are grateful for the video production sponsored by the University of Washington Institute for Simulation and Interprofessional Studies. Please visit our website at tinyurl.com backslash UW Ultrasound to access all of our training materials. This material is copyrighted. You are permitted to copy, distribute, and post to websites. You are permitted to modify the content to adapt to specific populations and user needs on the condition that you include attribution to the University of Washington and retain any copyright notices and citations and attributions included in the original basic obstetric ultrasound training for midwives. The material in this video is provided for information purposes only. The University of Washington Institute for Simulation and Interprofessional Studies does not take responsibility for the accuracy of the content in this video.